All right, so welcome to our recorded lecture all about accounting for intangible assets. Our main focus will be on the acquisition, amortization definition, amortizing intangible asset with a finite life, and impairment of intangible asset with indefinite life. We have our illustration here. It talks about acquiring an intangible asset. So as part of our illustration, we have acquired, or we'll assume that we are ABC Limited. We acquired a patent for $20,000, okay? That was uh, 1st January 20X1. And the useful life will be five years. So basically, the journal entry will be like this. So it will be debit patent and then credit cash. Now for amortization, I got it. I got the definition from Investopedia. Okay, so it says amortization of intangible assets are also simply known as amortization. Is the process of expensing the cost of intangible asset over the projected life of the asset for tax or accounting purposes? This is important because we are trying to match the benefits that we receive from. Uh, using the asset, in this case, intangible asset or the patent uh, in our illustration, with its associated costs. So that is consistent with the matching principle. We have three types of amortization. We have straight line diminishing balance units of production method. Okay, so let us continue the illustration here. We have been, we have been given with the uh, uh, information information about the patent so we assume that there will be no active market for the patent so we are not supposed to recognize any residual value and then we were given the units that can be produced while using the patent okay so we were asked to do the amortization for straight line declining or diminishing balance and then units of production Okay, so from our illustration, we have $20,000 divided by estimated useful life, with this, which is five years. So for under the straight, straight line method, we have annual amortization of $4,000. So the journal entry will be for the first year of amortizing the asset. We have debit amortization expense patent and then credit accumulated amortization patent. That will be 4000 so for a, uh, every year, amortization expense will be $4,000, okay? of course, for the whole year. So if you see it in the accumulated amortization ledger account, you can see here that it's consistent at the end of the year. So assuming that we are amortizing it for the whole year, for uh, each year of operation, Now, we talk about declining or diminishing balance. We, have, we will use 150% uh, percent for illustration purposes. So what we will do is we'll get uh, 1 divide N. That is the estimated useful life. So that will be 0.2. You multiply it by 150%. Okay, That will be around 30%. So we have here the table to illustrate how the depression had gone through. So we have each year uh, depreciation, but you can see that it will vary. Now for declining balance method or diminishing balance method, unlike in straight line method, we have a consistent rate, uh, sorry, consistent annual amortization. But here in uh, diminishing balance, we will have a fixed rate but it will be based on the carrying amount of the asset, in this case, patent. Um, and then you multiply it by 30%. So let's see 20x1. Here, 20x1, we have our beginning balance, $20,000. You multiply it by 30%, you'll have 6000 So the carrying amount at the end of the year, you get the difference between the beginning of the year carrying amount against the annual 
amortization expense. So in 20x1, $14,000. And that will, that will be a carry forward amount for the next year. And then you multiply it by 30% again to get the annual amortization expense. So the process will go on and on until the last date. You can see the, the, there will be a note there. This amount is to balance to make the amount at the last year of estimate of the useful life of the patent to zero. So first year, this is the journal entry. So debit amortization expense and credit accumulated amortization for patent, $6,000. But you can see in the second year that this change, debit amortization expense, patent, and then accumulated amortization patent, that will be 4,200. Now in units of production method, we'll get the intangible asset cost and then divide it by total expected units of production. Okay, so the total units of production or estimated or expected will be 100,000 units. So $20,000 divide 100,000 units, you, can, you will have 20 cents per unit. So in units, uh, units produced in 20x1, we have 18,000, 20x2, 15,000 units, 20x3, 14,000 units, 20x4, 28,000 units, and then 20x5, 25,000 units. Then you will multiply it by the rate, which is 20 cents. You will get the amortization, annual amortization expense. And then annual amortization expense, it will, it will add up uh, to determine the accumulated amortization. So the first year, of course, that will be 3,600. And you can see in the second year, we have 3,000 dollars uh, annual amortization then you just have to add it from the previous accumulated amortization so it will add up on and on and on so the journal entry 20x1 31st december we have amortization expense patent and then accumulated amortization patent 3600 now if you compare the uh, the Annual depreciation for each method, we have a straight line method, you can see that it's consistent. Diminishing balance, you can see that the annual depreciation decreases. Okay. And then for units of production, we have this. And if you compare uh, accumulated amortization, okay, you can see the difference. Let's go on and discuss about impairment of intangible asset with indefinite life. Okay, so the, the best example here will be goodwill. Goodwill arises particularly on the consolidation and acquisition of another company, okay, or consolidation of two companies. So there will be acquirer and acquiree. So for more discussion on that, you can see my lecture on consolidation. Now, let's go on to the illustration. Okay, on 1st January 20X1, okay, MNO acquired all the shares of XYZ Limited for $1 million. There was no difference between the fair value of costs of net assets, sorry, uh, between fair value and the cost of net assets during the acquisition of XYZ. Okay, uh, and then the share capital retained earnings will be 500000 to 400000 Okay. Share capital is $500,000 and retained earnings $400,000 from XYZ. And then on 31st December, uh, that will be end of the year, you are supposed to consolidate because this is 100% acquisition. And you determine that the goodwill was impaired by 5%. So we were asked to calculate for goodwill from acquisition as needed for consolidation and journalize the elimination entries. So the elimination, sorry, the calculation of goodwill, we have acquisition cost of $1 million. And then we have $900,000. That is the fair value of identifiable net assets. So the difference between these two will be goodwill. Okay, so we have uh, elimination entry 
debit share capital, debit retained earnings, and debit goodwill. Okay, so we have 500,000, 400,000, and 100,000. And then credit investment in XYZ Limited. Okay, $1 million. And then for recognition, also called recognition in the elimination or consolidation entry, of the impairment loss, we have impairment loss dash goodwill and then credit accumulated impairment loss dash goodwill. Okay, so we have $5,000. Those entries will not appear it will not appear in the journal book, but it will only appear in the consolidation working paper. That's the end of my lecture or recorded lecture. Thank you for listening and watching. Hope you learned something.